Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing another favorite topic of mine called serverless functions. When you have a web application or even simpler, just a block of code that you wanna run on like the internet, the conventional way of doing this is to go to some cloud provider like AWS, Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, spin up a server and deploy your code on that server to run your code on. Obviously, this is a massive oversimplification of that process. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that you need some kind of server to be able to run your code somewhere on the internet. This server will always be running your code as long as it hasn't crashed due to whatever reason. And this means that even if your web application isn't actually being used, or like if you're not receiving any web requests, for example, you will still be paying for renting or occupying that server or server space, which isn't really ideal for anyone because you'll be paying for something that you don't really need, especially if you don't have that much load on your website or web application or any application in general. Another point to consider here is that what if you don't actually care about the server itself in terms of like provisioning it and maintaining it, but the only thing you actually care about is just running whatever block of code or function that you have. Does that mean that you still will have to go through the entire process of choosing a cloud provider, spinning up a server, configuring it and maintaining it? Well, not anymore. This is actually where these serverless functions come into play. Serverless functions allow you to run code without having to worry about the infrastructure and the server behind the scenes. You just literally supply your code function in whatever language just written into your cloud provider and your function will literally just run there on demand. By the way, if you don't know what on demand means, on demand means that it only runs when it receives a request or when a task, for example, is scheduled to run at a specific time. This allows you to only pay when you run your code and when you consume actual server resources. Consequently, as you might imagine, this has the potential to save you a lot of money, especially if you don't get that much load or you're just starting out. However, it's important to make the distinction that serverless does not actually mean that there's no server. Serverless just means that you as a developer do not have to worry about the infrastructure aspect of this entire process, but it's rather on your cloud provider to handle that aspect for you. So if you're still not 100% sure about the serverless thing or don't understand it fully yet, let's try a different angle here. And as usual, I scoured the internet for the perfect analogy when I came across this amazing blog post over here, which does a great job of comparing server and serverless models. So shout out to Aswath for the awesome analogy. This server concept is like, let's say you want to bake bread, for example. Then you will have to go buy wheat, flour, water, and eggs all by yourself, potentially from different stores. You'll then have to mix it all together in certain proportions. At least that's how I think bread's made or baked. And then you have to bake it all by yourself to make just a single unit of bread. This is technically how the conventional deploy a web application on a server model works. Now let's talk about serverless and how that relates to bread making. Nowadays, you can outsource your bread making to a third party contract. What happens is that you give your bread recipe to this third party contractor and they make the bread for you in exchange for a fee. You can then label and sell that bread as your own brand for a higher price than what you paid the third party contractor so that you make some profit. So why would you wanna hire a third party contractor to bake your bread for you rather than you baking it yourself? And that's actually a great question. First, you might not really wanna worry about purchasing all the raw materials and well, any special oven that might be needed to bake that bread. For a fee, a third party contractor takes care of all of that for you. Second reason is, if, for example, some influencer or celebrity comes by your bread brand, really likes it and decides to tweet about it, for example, it could result in like 10,000 orders of bread overnight, for example. And even though that sounds amazing, let's face it, you as a single entity have absolutely no possible way on delivering those 10,000 orders, simply because you don't have the bandwidth or the infrastructure for it. However, the third party contractor is able to handle that massive order because they, number one, have the infrastructure and possibly the machinery and their staffing requirements that might be needed for such a job. So to bring this full circle, in this analogy, the recipe is your backend code that you supply to the serverless function. The third party contractor is the cloud service provider that offers you those serverless functions that will help you take care of the job better. So the gist is that you don't really have to worry about how the contractor does the job. You only care about the job being done. Before we end our conversations on serverless function, let's talk about some of the advantages of why you would wanna use serverless functions. Well, aside from the clear advantage, advantage that in serverless function you only pay as you use almost all big cloud providers nowadays offer serverless functions, which means a lot of competition and that usually means great service. As an example, all the three massive cloud providers offer serverless solutions. In AWS, for example, these are called Lambda functions. They're called Azure functions in Microsoft Azure and cloud functions in Google Cloud. Another big advantage of these serverless functions is that the 
Another big advantage of these serverless functions is that they're easily scalable. So for example, let's say you write a blog post on your website and then some influencer discovers it and shares it, which drives a lot of eyes to your content. You literally end up blowing all of a sudden and you get so much unprecedented traffic or attention to your website. The conventional server that you might have might not be able to handle all this unprecedented load, especially if you don't have some kind of like auto scaling policy defined. But that's beyond the scope of this conversation. This might make your server crash, which would totally suck killing the tide of your viral moment. But luckily that won't happen with serverless because as the load on your website increases and goes higher and higher, more functions are spawned automatically to support that load. It's absolutely amazing. Like all you have to do is just literally go viral. Now you're probably thinking, where do I sign up? This is awesome. And I don't blame you. Completely loving the enthusiasm, but hold up. Let me tell you about some of its limitations first. Since you as a developer, you don't actually own the server, you cannot really store state because these functions are stateless functions, which means that as soon as the function finishes running, it's terminated and any data that was stored in memory by that function is lost forever. And so as you would imagine, not every function can become a serverless function. Only functions that do not require any form of state storage could be suitable as serverless functions. Examples of such functions are functions that send emails, functions that handle authentication, functions that scrape data from different sites, for example. The whole point is that these functions get spawned to perform something and then they finish, get terminated, and they're completely forgotten about along with any state that was contained. But don't worry too much about that because there is a solution for that. You can still have some external data store or database that lives on another server that the serverless function can communicate with and can technically store data in. I hope this was helpful in helping you understand what serverless functions are. And I hope you share my passion for serverless functions after trying them. If you've enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button to get notified when I release a new video. Also like and comment if you'd like me to make a video about a specific concept. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.